Hello Crosshaw and welcome to yet another edition of Physics at Home. As always, here are your retrieval starters. Number one, what is a resultant force? Number two, what are the conditions for staying at rest or at a constant velocity? It's the same answer for both. Number three, what forces are on a person sitting, much as you probably are, on a chair? Draw a little sketch and label it. And finally, draw a circuit symbol for a fuse. Pause the video, have a go, and resume when ready. Let's look at the answers. Resultant forces can be described as a single force which has the same effect as all the forces acting on an object. To stay at rest or in constant speed or velocity, there must be no resultant force. You could also express that as saying that there are balanced forces on the object. A person sitting on a chair will be pulled down by their weight and pushed up by the chair itself. Okay, so for a free body diagram, you would need to make sure that both of those arrows are coming out of the object. Apologies for my poor drawing skills, rather than pushing into it. So you would label the weight on the bottom and the reaction force, the normal contact force of the chair pushing up. For a fuse, here is the symbol. Notice a rectangle with a line through the middle. Remember always to draw your connecting wires on the left and right of each symbol that you draw. Today we'll look at the idea of falling objects under constant acceleration and the ideas of free fall and terminal velocity associated with this. We will look at the acceleration of such objects under gravity. We will describe how forces on the objects change as they fall through a fluid such as air or water and hopefully explain why objects reach terminal velocity. Consider an object such as an apple falling through a fluid such as the air. Initially it will accelerate at a constant rate due to the force of gravity. So if this was to continue after one second, we travel at 9.8, after 2, 19.6, 29.4, 39.2, and so on and so on until you hit the ground or hit somebody. Why doesn't it continue this in real life? Or indeed consider a ball falling through a liquid such as thick viscous oil. We'll be back to the apple later. Some questions to consider about that. And let's let Isaac Newton ask him himself. What forces are acting on the ball, downward and upward? How do these forces change? Or do they change when the ball gets faster? Will the ball keep getting faster? until it hits the bottom? Explain your answers in terms of forces. And if you want to see an example of this in motion, please follow the link shown in the video. What you will find is that the ball will reach a constant speed quite rapidly and descend through the tube. This is because of frictional forces, drag, as it moves through the viscous oil. Switching from apples to skydivers, we can break this process into steps. So whether it is a ball in oil, an apple falling from a tree, or a skydiver falling from the sky, the forces and their relationship follow a consistent pattern. So in the first picture, the skydiver has just jumped out of an airplane. 
and the only force acting on him is the force of gravity, his own weight. As he descends, he picks up speed, which causes an increase in air resistance. The air resistance is proportional to his speed. Note that the weight remains at a constant value. At some point, the upward and downward forces will balance. Have a go at filling the gaps on the left. Now, if he was to pull his parachute, the balance of forces would rapidly change. By pulling the parachute, you vastly increase the air resistance at a given speed. So initially, there will be a large upward force causing a deceleration. But again, as air resistance is proportional to speed, as he falls and slows down, the forces will reach a new balance and a lower constant speed. Again, try and complete each sentence on the left. For those doing triple science, you might look at what this on a velocity time graph and perhaps interpret it. So initially, there is a constant acceleration at the start, 9.8 meters per second squared. But notice the gradient changing until we reach a constant speed, a terminal velocity, when the forces are balanced. When the parachute is pulled, there is a rapid deceleration. And again, a new balance is reached at the lower constant speed, a new lower terminal velocity. If we were to try this on the moon, however, you would get a graph like the green line here. The gradient is less steep than the initial gradient for skydiver because there is less gravity on the moon. However, that gradient is constant until the moment of impact because there is no air resistance on the moon, nothing to slow you down. To have a look at how objects fall in microgravity, or sorry, in a, an airless environment, removing air resistance, have a look at this video from Dr. Brian Cox. And finally, have a go at our variety of apply to demonstrate questions. Please try them without looking at the answers. There is a different one for a triple and for trilogy based on the slightly different content in this section. So the triple version being based upon that velocity time graph you've seen a few minutes ago. And the trilogy one being based on the idea of steady speed and acceleration. As always, pause, have a go, and you can self-correct with these ones. Thank you for your time, and I hope to see you again soon. Don't forget, mentally or on paper, write one, two, three, the work you've produced today.